Welcome back. You're still watching the break on this top day of uh, February 2024. And uh, despite the sad news of the passing of Kelvin Kiptoum, the other stories that we want to talk about this morning, and already we spoke to uh, the different panelists that are here in studio, and I want us to dive straight into it because this is the week that Parliament will be resuming sessions after the long recess of uh, Christmas. So tomorrow they are back in business and uh, so much is awaiting them from the Affordable Housing Bill of 2023, which has been going through public participation, uh, to the question of regulations in as far as the health laws are concerned. We understand that the Minister of Health is still continuing with the public participation on regulations that... Um, uh, they, they presented to the public, and of course, after that, Parliament will have to have a word on it before they can uh, be implemented, and therefore mean the starting of the rollout of the Social Health Insurance Fund, the contributions and the other funds that are there, primary health care uh, fund, as well as the one on chronic illnesses, emergencies, and critical illnesses. Uh, fund. I may have put different words uh, different, in different order, but that's the idea. Um, but also, there is the National Dialogue uh, Committee report that is expected to be uh, now uh, endorsed by the House. There have been a lot of promises from different quarters, from different leaders of the House, and we'll be waiting to see how that goes. But first up is the question of the affordable housing bill that we understand now is at that critical stage of... Um, the committee writing its report. And I'll begin with you, Senator, on this, because a very long break that has been taken. During that break, there has been um, a judgment of the High Court that uh, found the housing levy to be unconstitutional. Then at the same time, the Court of Appeal came out and said that uh, they cannot continue uh, to stay the orders of the High Court, meaning uh, that uh, the unconstitutionality would appear to hold for the time being. So, Senator, tell me, as a Parliament resumes, what are your thoughts in as far as concluding this stubborn question about the affordable housing? Senator. Yeah. <laughs> Sam, you, will you start with him? Because my mind has been <laughs> going through this issue of the funeral. I mean, okay. of the death of uh, the champion. All right, all right, Senator. Let me begin with you, Fred. Um, as, as, we, as we look ahead into... Uh, the new session. What are your thoughts this morning? Thank you, Sam. Uh, it's true that um, there have been issues with the affordable housing levy. And the High Court made a decision that uh, the levy was unconstitutional. Now, uh, the bill that is expected, I think that's been tabled before National Assembly. Mm. Our expectation is that when Parliament goes back uh, in the next session, Parliament will look at that bill. But there are certain fundamental issues that when they were doing public participation, the public raised mm -hmm. and stakeholders. One of them was raised by the National Lands Commission. If you remember the conflict in terms of land ownership. Again, if you read that bill, the bill establishes the affordable housing fund that is meant to facilitate the development of the affordable housing and associated social and uh, physical infrastructure. The bill also establishes the board. Mm. Now, in that bill, the establishment of the fund, of, of the levy itself, that uh, provides that 1.5% of the gross income of the employed mm -hmm. that will be matched with that of the, of, of the employer. But our issues that we are raising is the unemployed that also shall be contributing the same mm. of 1.5. Mm -hmm. How will Kenya Kwanzaa government ensure collection of the levy from the, from the unemployed. That is something that I'm sure Parliament will be looking at. The other issue is uh, uh, the collector, mm -hmm. the designated collector of the levy. You remember in the initial uh, provisions, there was the... Uh, 
seers of other ministries that were supposed to be part of those who are appointing the collector. But in this instance, the High Court covers that it is the CS National Treasury mm -hmm. that is uh, tasked with the, uh, this designating a collector of a national fund. Right. And I think there are some progress that have been made. However, I must say that for a very long time, there's been perception that for us in Azimio, we are against the affordable housing. We are not. Mm. We are not because we strongly believe that this is a provision of the Constitution as far as Article 43 concerned, access to uh, uh, adequate housing. And therefore, as Raila Odinga has always said, we support the affordable housing. What we have been against is the process that has been uh, implied by the Kenya Kwanzaa to achieving that, of which the court found irregularities. And therefore, in this bill, the expectation is that it shall cure those irregularities that the court highlighted, as I've outlined the four or, or five of them. Mm. Right, and Deputy Speaker, of course, all these parliaments will have an opportunity to debate and even make amendments <coughs> where necessary. And we saw the Attorney General just the other day telling a committee of the House that um, the way the bill is indicated there, that this bill does not concern counties, meaning that it is not necessary for it to go to the Senate, but the Attorney General is saying we'll be cheating ourselves if we say that this does not affect counties. <coughs> and he also says that there will be no harm in taking it to the Senate for concurrence. If there are any issues, they can be taken through mediation. Then one wonders what happened in the first instance? Why does there appear to have been a rush to have this bill coming into force at a time there are already challenges in, in the High Court? And how do you eventually cure all those, all those gaps? Um, I think what happened, uh, Sam, is that uh, the matter went before the courts. The courts isolated three issues. <coughs> one was the lack of a legal framework. The other one was the discriminatory nature of the, sure. of the contribution. And then also <coughs> on the issue that it concerns uh, counties. And uh, Parliament, <coughs> pragmatic as it is, have gone back <coughs> and decided to cure what the courts have raised. And so if you look at what uh, the, the current uh, bi the bill that is under discussion mm -hmm. and that uh, public participation was done during the Christmas break has tried to cure these obvious uh, anomalies that were picked out by the courts. Because we know that this is an urgent and very much needed program in government. Mm -hmm. We do not want Kenyans to continue living uh, in the slums. In fact, what the I would have expected that government should have been taken to court for failure to implement Article 43. <coughs> yeah? But of course, some of the people who have been fighting against um, uh, affordable housing include Raila Odinga, who has been the Lord of Poverty, has been representing for 30 years the biggest slum in Africa. <coughs> so what is I, that? No, no, that is a fact. I'm stating a fact. So probably he finds nothing wrong with people <coughs> living in the slums. Can, can, but can you not that not being said and done. Let's just talk about the issue here. Yes, but, but that's a fact. What? A lot of poverty. Uh, Kabir, Kibera is the, is, the, is the biggest slum in Africa. And who has been member of parliament there for more than 20 years? Raila Odinga. That's why for him, affordable housing has never <coughs> been in his mind. And that is why... He was one of the people who've been against it. But I'm happy to hear today from their spokesperson here who has said that now they're not against uh, affordable housing. And it's because they've had the mood of the country. Kenyans want affordable housing. Kenyans want to be able to home, li uh, own homes. <coughs> Kenyans want to live in decent homes that have proper sanitation, security, electricity, and all the amenities that he has in his own home state. But let's go back to what the courts raised. So on those three matters that the courts raised, mm -hmm. Uh, Parliament is taking into account. And remember that the Attorney General is uh, the, the chief government advisor. So yes, he is, uh, if he's given that legal advice, we are bound to follow it. And at the moment, I know that there's very high level discussions um, relating to the issue that the matter must go or should go to concerns counties. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you know, county planning and development, including housing, according to the constitution, uh, is, a, is a, a function of counties, and obviously under Article 110, it's going to, uh, it affects counties, uh, so to speak. 
Maybe at the beginning one did not think so. But uh, on further interrogation, that has become clear. Discussions are going on and we are waiting when the, upon the time the, when the house opens. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to get uh, advice and a ruling on the, from the speaker on it. But that is a, not, um, it's not a, a deal breaker because this happens all the time. Right. There are many times when there's been arguments whether a matter concerns counties or not. Because remember, devolution <coughs> is just only 10 years old. And this is not the first matter where initially it had been thought not to concern counties, but immediately thereafter. So how is that decision made? <coughs> Sorry? How is that decision of whether a bill affects counties or not? How is it made? It, it starts uh, from the committee level. There's usually a debate about it. And like uh, you've seen with lawyers, there's always three different opinions so which committee the the usually when it the mat, when the when the process of legislation making uh -huh. the debates can go on at committee level because the committees also receive legal advice and sometimes the mood of the committees that doesn't concern counties sometimes it's come actually up to the floor of the house and it is even deliberated about it and sometimes we get communication from the <coughs> senate and Senate says this does concern counties. In other cases, when it's not agreed, uh -huh. then it goes to mediation. So these are processes that are provided for under the standing order. Yes. So, so it I'm, is what nothing I'm, new. What I'm seeking to understand is, so you're saying it is at the committee, like where it is now. So after first reading, uh, committed to the committee, relevant committee. From the time even of pre-publication. Pre yes, usually the discussions begin because even when the, the bill is published, yep. normally that statement is made. But doesn't, it's not cast in stone. In fact, if you look at various pieces of legislation, there's been that debate. And then eventually, sometimes, the National Assembly agrees. I, I'm wondering because uh, Kimani Shung was the leader of majority in the bill uh, published, um, I think it was, uh, was it 4th December, said that the bill relates to the broader policy framework on housing with um, a particular emphasis on the mobilization of funds for affordable housing geared towards the actualization of the right to accessible and adequate housing and Article 43 1B of the Constitution. This is a function of the national government and a part one of the fourth schedule to the Constitution. The bill therefore does not affect the functions and powers of county governments and is therefore not a bill concerning counties within the meaning of Article 110 of the Constitution understanding order. So this appears, this is a decision that was made pre-publication. Yes. And that's what I'm asking. Is it the owner of the bill who decides or is it a sitting between speakers of the Senate and the National Assembly? For example, when I even publish my own private members' bills, I make that statement. Sometimes I can make the statement that it's not a money bill or I can make a statement that it's not, does not concern counties. Uh -huh. But by the time it comes through the process and there's further interrogation, which is the purpose of the legislation making process in the first place, then new opinions come in. And other people say, I think it concerns counties. On the face of it, actually, affordable housing, because it's got to do with mobilizing resources mm. for the construction of affordable housing and then developing a process by which people can access the affordable housing and be able to buy them and so on then it doesn't concern counties. But then when the issue was raised <coughs> that actually most of the land is being provided by counties, by counties. Not in, you know, it's not in 100% of the cases that the land is provided by the counties, but in a majority of the cases, counties are providing the land. Then that's, it does affect that. And then also when you look, uh, if you decide to read the portion that uh, county planning and development, including housing, mm -hmm. is a function of, uh, of, uh, of counties, it, com it, it comes on. So there is nothing unusual about it. I have a bill, the, rep the Kenya Reparations Bill. Yeah. I, ha I argued initially that, uh, you know, it's not, it, it does, it, no, it was the constitutional amendment one that I argued that it was not a money bill, but eventually uh, people weighed in and did tell me, and I'm a lawyer, and I think anybody who has studied the law enough knows, law is like math, one plus one is two. Except that in law, it can be either two or three or four. There can be three options. That's why we go to court for interpretation as to which one of the three answers is the one that must carry the day. Okay. Yes. I so so, so, so those three items are currently being, uh, were, were currently actually being were considered right. under the new draft bill. Mm. And we hope that it will come before the House. Mm. And I think... Uh, my position, that's my personal position, is that a subject, of course, to the, this is going to be left to the speaker, mm. because the speaker will make a ruling on it, that 
if it needs to go to Senate, it's just a faster way because this is a program that we cannot All right. let to delay a day longer. So it can go to Senate. And I know that Senate is in agreement with the National Assembly in terms of the principle that we must have affordable right. housing implemented in Kenya. I, I don't know how you're able to know that, yet you don't see that. I, I speak, it, no, I speak to, I speak to, to members, uh, no, no, it's I speak okay. to members of it's, the it's Senate of and a majority members, <laughs> yes. So maybe a few may not agree, <laughs> but those, these are my colleagues. All right, yes. Senator, I mean, honorable boss, that's okay. Senator, talk to me about uh, your thoughts about this bill, but also you understand it because you've sat at the National Assembly, now you sit at the <laughs> Senate. Your understanding of that statement by the leader of majority that the bill does not concern counties, when should such a decision, such an important matter of, of national importance, how should that decision be made for good order? Okay, um, for lack of uh, a better explanation, mm. My honest observation is that this is one of the policies that the Jubilee government, I mean, that the KK government has actually really mismanaged. I will start by explaining to you this. Mm -hmm. There was a time when I was sitting here and I actually raised the issue. I said, you know, the problem with this issue about housing, mm -hmm. um, like many people have said, and I, I listened to my sister. Uh, High Excellency, uh, <coughs> not Excellency. You are entitled to that. You can represent the president. If he sends you somewhere, he can I think that's you. sarcastic. No, no, sincerely, <laughs> sincerely. You know, I highly, highly, please, please carry on. I highly respect you. It is not uh, sarcastic at all. Just call me Gladys. It makes it okay. easier for you. Okay, um, <laughs> Madam Speaker, Gladys Shelley. Thank you. I wanted to say that, Madam Gladys. I really would like to beg you, can you people stop referencing Raila and saying what Raila did and what he didn't do? Why? The circumstances under which Raila has been in the Kenyan political matrix may or may not have enabled him not to change the circumstances in Kibera because of the complex nature on the ownership of the land and ownership of the rights of the people who live in Madari. I, rem I mean, in, in Kibera, Madari is the same and all this. He didn't speak about it. No, he, severally. So I remember severally Raila um, coming in with, you remember there was the Tanzanian lady who was in charge of uh, <laughs> housing, habitat. The, you remember that lady? I remember, Anna. S yes, so many times having slum seen- Slump upgrading. Slump upgrading. Program. I remember so many times Raila going to Kibira. I remember him, that lady always going to Kibira to discuss the issues. So I, I, I'm also happy, Sami, that you said, let's deal with the issues. Mm -hmm. The issues are this. Give us a legal framework that is above board. Enable us to, to get Kenyans to play a role according to the law. Mm -hmm. Some of the issues that are outstanding, and, the, and I've seen the, the reference you made about uh, Kimani Shungwa raising the issue about how this is not a money bill, it has nothing to do with the county government, and therefore, the reality is look at the schedule, you look at the fourth schedule, what are the functions of county governments? The other issue that is challenging, and I've, I've come here several Sami, and I said, we are having a challenge on two things. <coughs> The land where some of these affordable housing are being located and being situated, some of that land is county land. And the National Land Commission stated that when there were public hearings. They said the complexity of that is you're taking public land. And you see, uh, Honorable Gladys, what is happening is it gives space for people mm -hmm. to fight the, the affordable housing uh, uh, policy of the government without even some of them understanding what the positive things of this housing program is going to be. We are not against the program of affordable housing. What we are against is the way it's being done. What we are saying is, come out, for example, to Kisi County. You, like, I'll give you an example, Madam Sholei. The president came to Kisi. Mm -hmm. He actually spoke to us and convinced uh, uh, many of us and said, you know what I want you to do? Let us please have uh, some, maybe 2,000 units of houses to be done in Kisi. Then, one of the things that came up is that uh, somebody somewhere went and made a decision that this affordable housing is supposed to be situated in a place, you know Suneka, you know where the airstrip is, mm -hmm. all right? 
the community is not for that. You see what I'm saying? There have never been public hearings held in Kisi to ask the people of Suleka who made the decision that they are going to offload the airstrip and they are going to put appropriate, I mean, affordable housing there. The, just hold on, madam. Please, let me make my case. <laughs> These are the issues that many people have been raising. The second issue, Sami, me have decided to steer away from the legalese. The legalese can be sorted out. We can agree at the Senate. We can agree. That isn't a big problem. The question we are asking is, right now when private companies are building houses which are supposed to be considered to be affordable, like the people in, uh, in Earth River, mm -hmm. uh, that company, was it, what is it called? Uh, <clears throat> these guys who have done so many houses around Earth River, uh, you know who they are. There's this Chinese company, mm -hmm. Edaman. Mm -hmm. All right. Edaman is actually building affordable housing which a house, an apartment, two bedroom is costing 2.3 million. Our government is taking public land where Edelman actually bought the land at that place. It wasn't allocated to him. He bought it. All right. And the houses they're selling is 2.2. If you take the houses which are being built by the state or which the government wants to implement, what we are saying, come up and tell us what reprieve you've got by using public land. Mm. whereby we expect the reprieve you would have gotten is to actually make these houses much more affordable. If the affordable housing, for example, a two-bedroom house was at one million shillings, I would agree with you that indeed that's affordable. The problem is this. The president was building these houses for the hustlers, for the border border people. Tell me which biker is going to raise for you 15,000 to pay rent on a monthly basis when this guy is making 500 shillings a day times 30 days. That is exactly the amount he nets for a month. You have not included his, his insurance. And that motorbike is not actually his. He has leased it from somebody where if he makes 500 a month a day, he has to share that money with the owner. So he will never afford that house. So one of the issues that many have been raising is this. The president needs to come up with clarity and explain why this house, which has been built on public land, is going to cost 2.6 million, the same way Edaman has bought land in, in uh, Earth River and is selling the house at 2.2. What is it that is making these government houses more expensive than the ones which a private individual, a de private developer, is selling at a cheaper price than the government houses? The final issue, Sami. I am the senator of Kizi County. Right now, as I speak with you, I don't know how many houses are needed in Kisi. I don't know why we picked the number 5,000. I don't know why that is the case. My argument is there should have been a better way of engaging and discussing with the leadership, the community, the governors, the MCAs, so that all of us are walking in the same path. Right now, what is happening is that, is that the houses are being built. Nobody knows whether these are rationale, whether in Nairobi there'll be 200,000, whether in Kisi you have 3,000, whether in Kisumu you are going <coughs> to have 9,000. There should have been a rationalization, which is very clear to the leadership, to the management, to the na national government, whereby the government says, no, this house is surely, you cannot buy a cheaper house than this one. Okay. This is the best we could offer you. And so how, how is that done? Is it through a bill or is it through regulations or how? My argument is, that is where the question of the legal framework comes in. Okay. It is the legal framework which would come in, one, in form of a bill, and number two, in form of the regulations which the government would bring out where every county would be given its framework where we look like in Kisi. We would look and say, why should we build, for example, why should we build 8,000 units in Kisi town? And by the way, Sami, I'll bring you another thing that we are talking about. There are individuals who have historically been investors. Some of those individuals have built apartments in Kisi. Some of those in houses are actually occupied. What happens to those houses? Naturally, the people who are staying in these houses where somebody had even borrowed money from a bank to build them, they will shift to these government houses if they are cheaper. Then it means you are going to create a, a glut okay. in the housing market where the individuals who are supposed to be having 
houses which are supposed to be settled in, houses which are supposed to be affordable. You will now find that people are moving into these houses. The private developers who are building houses in certain towns will have houses which are going to be empty. Let us take a short break. When we come back, we continue with this as we also transition to the other part of the conversation, which is on the implementation or endorsement of the National Dialogue Committee report that will give guidance on how to reconstitute IBC. The High Court has said that political expediency should not take the place of constitutional provisions. After the break, we have that conversation. Welcome back. You're still watching the break on this 12th day of February 2024. And you're just um, concluding, wrapping up matters here on the question of the affordable housing bill. And uh, Deputy Speaker, there are two issues that have been raised by um, Senator Onyonka here, especially on... There was a last point. Can I finish that so that he, she answers? No, no, no. Let's give okay. her the, the, okay. the chance first. Okay. The pricing of these homes, he thinks that um, there are certain targeted market that may not actually afford to pay 15,000 shillings every other month. Um, but also there has been questions before the public participation teams on the deposit required of 10%. And you've been asking the question is 10% of what? But also that other part of Article 110, uh, sub Article 3, that states that before the House considers a bill, the speakers of the National Assembly and Senate shall gently, gently resolve any question as to whether it is a bill concerning counties and if it is, whether it is a special or an ordinary bill, how do you respond? Yeah, just, just this one, let me just say it very briefly. And I, I, suppose I've, I think I've repeated myself on this point. The process of discussing whether a matter concerns counties or not is always an ongoing process from the inception of the bill to the end of it. It is a conversation that's held throughout. So, so it may it, not it, be raised. Is, is that the practice or yes, yes. what the constitution Yes, requires? actually it so, is. No, no. So with the, the Constitution saying that before either House considers, the Speaker of the National Assembly and the Senate shall jointly resolve. Yes. What, what is to consider? Sorry? What, always, what happens is, at the beginning, it can be said not to concern counties. At the time, at some point in the legislative making process, that matter can be raised. Sometimes it can be communication from the Senate indicating that that matter concerns counties and must go to them. In other cases, there isn't an agreement and when there is no agreement, there is always the process of setting up a mediation uh, team. Mm. But actually, one of the most important businesses for the two speakers of the house mm. is always a back and forth on these mat particular matters. So it is not unusual. So People are picking it. Would you it. know if this has happened? Sorry? This back and forth. Um, sorry, no. I'm just bring your No, words. no, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't know. Okay, you didn't know. I think when we go back on recess, we'll, I'll know whether there's been communication. Yeah, or not. Okay. Now, let me go to the point about uh, affordable housing. First of all, um, oh, you mentioned about prices. Yeah. It's a pity that I don't have my fact sheet with me mm. on affordable housing. But I think if I recall very clearly, the document that uh, I have shows that, uh, in fact, the, some of the houses come as low as 4,300 shillings per month. The way these houses are designed is that there are some that mm. are actually bed sitters. And then there are others that are one bedroom apartments and others are two bedroom apartments, others are three bedroom apartments. So people take according to their, to their, their earnings. Their earnings. And, and research has shown, and I think these are some of the things that have been discussed. In Mukuru Kwanjenga, for example, the average rent that people are paying is 2,500 shillings. Mm. And it's a shack that has no sanitation, uh, no water. In fact, they pay 114% uh, water, more than you. Mm. They buy, because they have, to buy, they have to pay for toilets, they have to pay for water, and they have to pay the 2,500 shillings in rent. What we are saying is that amount of money, those people can pay the exact same amount of money to rent to own the house. Mm. They are basically paying the same amount they pay, except that on this one, they have water. They have electricity. They have, uh, they, it, it's, it's, a, it's a place that has, uh, they don't have to worry about getting cholera. It's got proper sanitation. But there's also an additional uh, point that uh, affordable housing has. In every affordable housing project, they are pegging it to a school. So for example, I know that in Wasingishu County, 
in Pioneer where they're putting up their affordable housing, they've picked up the nearest school, which is Kimalel Primary, and say they will add more classrooms. And then they have picked Pioneer Sub-County Hospital, which is nearby, and again, as part of the project, they will ensure that they upgrade uh, and create more room at the hospital. So it is, it how, is an how entire... Making, how are they making those decisions? Sorry? How are they making those decisions? Based on what? Uh, I do not... That I think you'll have to invite the minister, uh, the person in charge of housing. Maybe you can invite P.S. Hinga. <coughs> but I know they don't think of it narrowly. So if you go to those, uh, the Chinese project you're talking about, mm. they don't care about the school. They don't care about the, the hospital. This one, because we are looking at the entire ecosystem around. There is also, in fact, in that, those affordable housing, there is, in fact, uh, if you've gone to the Pangani project and so on, they also build shops, kiosks, yeah. so that people, the Mamamboga who sells on the road, can now be able to get a, 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 you know, 10 by 10 or 5 by whatever size small place where the vegetables, so people, vegetables are sold. So when people come into that building, you're able to do your shopping there. You don't have to stop on the roadside um, and be able to buy your vegetables because it should have been brought there. Your children will be able to walk to school from nearby there. In other places, actually the county is also providing land for schools to be built. And in some of them, uh, members of parliament and uh, with CDF, have been encouraged that because there's going to be an extra 5,000 uh, houses here, which means households, you're counting on an average of maybe two or three children in that particular uh, household. So you can almost project how many students will be in the area. And, and therefore, th that is fine. Yeah, uh, so it's a, it's a, you're, you're, he's not comparing apple for apple. Okay. It's, so, his project is a totally private sector. They just want to provide... Uh, the, the, then the question, because I mean, uh, what, what you're saying, those are good plans, um, especially if they are to work. But then again, what ties the implementers to the dream? Because when you look at the affordable housing bill 2023, it doesn't say what you're saying. It doesn't say what role the countries will play in providing land. The, okay, you, you, you see the affordable housing is just talking about getting the money and securing the offtake so that when the affordable housing is built, government is able to guarantee the offtake. On the issue of uh, land, it's a separate negotiation with the county. So then it's not, it doesn't have to Only be anchored in law. Works. Because if you anchor it in the law, then it's, it's, uh, it's, there's so many variables, because in every county it varies. That's why that's a, that's a process of a different agreement outside of the, it can't be put in the law. You can't put so things that are be, a moving target how in do legislation. How constituents of Wasingishu County hold the county governor accountable on the question of affordable housing? That one goes to the county assembly. That is, that is something that goes before the county assembly. Okay. Presentations are made before the county assembly. That's why I'm saying he's mixing issues. Mm. Some not I'm not. Can I, can I respond? You cannot put everything. Okay. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. Allow me to... Let, let me have a right of He me. had his reply. chance to speak, and I'm just responding to the issues. Let me finish I, I responding. I That's why I then, uh, uh, No, I've not concluded. An extra question. And then also, yeah. when he talks about uh, the issue relating to the fact that in Kisi, the proposal was to put up the affordable housing uh, on the airstrip. He says the people of um, people, the people of Kisi don't agree. Yes, that is a, a different conversation from uh, the affordable housing. So let's not make no. You, we've agreed that there is money that can be used to construct affordable housing. No, procuring the land is done as a separate process Mwishmio. and a separate public participation. Mwishmio. In fact, when it is, comes to that, the counties themselves in the county assembly mm. are going through that process to be able to agree on it. Then there is also the larger picture of trying to change the socialization of people. <clears throat> in Kisi, for example, we know mm. that Kisi today almost has no land because the land has been so fragmented even though it's such fertile land, they are, not, they are nearly almost not able to produce food. And soon they won't be able to produce food. So it's also about the socialization of telling people we can actually develop vertically. Not all of us have to be on ground. Right. And that way we can be able to save the land like Israel does, that we live in high-rise apartment blocks and we're able to leave okay. the fertile that, land that, for production of food. So it's, 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 not, it's not as... Uh, 
simple as you're trying to okay. make it. Okay, Honorable Speaker. You have to think of it again as a larger plan. Again, good explanation, but there's still valid questions that are coming out. Um, I was just trying to look at the objects of the And bill. anything that is not in the bill yeah. will usually be in regulations. Okay. Because we have, we have the Act of oh, oh, Parliament, right. let's then we have the colleagues. subsidiary Honorable, legislation. Honorable Speaker, let's hear your colleagues. Um, uh, begin with you, uh, Senator, then I come to Thank you. Thank you. I have to discipline myself so that I don't respond to my senior sister. I may it look like I'm losing it. <laughs> yes, you can. I, I want to say this. Um, I would like Madame Cholet to sit here and explain to Kenyans what comes first. Do you go and take land and start building, or do you set a legal framework which includes the, re the, the rules and regulations? Uh, do you have to get a by, by, uh, by laws which are going to be passed by the county assemblies? Are you going to involve the stakeholders? And let me use a different uh, 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 a colloquial term, the owners of this land, so that then you can come and start building without creating unnecessary controversy. I'll give you an example. When I used the Edaman story, mm -hmm. I was not saying what the government is doing, it should be done the way Edaman did it. I used, this, I used it basically as an explanation that here is a private individual who has come to a three and bought 10 acres of land. He has put apartments, he has put, by the way, I wanted to mention to my leader here, uh, actually even Edaman, they have built schools within that development that they have got. They have put shopping centers within that development that they have got. In other words, what I'm, Sami, the, 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 the point I'm struggling with with the housing levy issue on a daily basis is, is something that I'm, I've realized she's not even able to explain herself. What is that? When you pay money through the uh, deductions which the government has introduced, what if you don't want that house? Who takes it? Why are you forcing me? This is a free market economy. Why are you forcing me to give deductions, which then you are going to take of my money, which then you want to build a house for me, which then you want to force me to buy? Okay, first is that, of all... No, Madam Shuley, please. Just, just, these are things our voters ask. Allow me I to, to answer, ask you to so you. that I give you, you answer my voters who are asking these questions. All right. We are not disagreeing. We just want there to be clarity. And we are not disagreeing that uh, affordable housing mm. should never happen in this country. In fact, the same way Her Excellency said, even Raila himself, he said the other day, I have no problem. And people are so happy about it. They, only re they refuse to listen the second mm. statement after his comments. He said, I have no problem with affordable housing. But please, can we do it properly? Can we have a legal framework? Can we engage the county governments? Right. Can we make sure, uh, Sami, can we make sure that there is such pure clarity? For example, uh, Madam Shuley, let me tell you what, if I was the president, he would have done that, it would have been fantastic. Take this person who is a border border, who the president wants to help. Take the Mamambonga. These houses are being sold for how many years? How many years is, that, is somebody supposed to pay for this house? It depends on your age, so you get long term. Assume it's a child who's 18 or 21 buying. How many years can they? They might have even 30 years. Why can't we even make it 50? I'm in Britain, wait, in I'm, Britain, I'm Sammy, 30. I said it's structured. I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing even with you. Even when you take a government, a loan from <laughs> government, that is how they structure it, depending I'm, on your age and years of service. I'm supporting you. What I am saying is this, Sammy. Why don't you then come up with that? a strategy which is going to make these houses <coughs> affordable to this border border person you want to help the, and the mama moga. And all you do most probably is extend the period on which this family can pay for that loan. Which means then your 4,000 you are talking about might actually end up 2,000. So you succeed. Why do you refuse to accept <coughs> such simple, okay. logical... Senator, uh, Sammy, I've heard you. There have been such best practices in other countries where affordable housing is built and <coughs> the, the government is a win, the, the consumers are a win, and everybody Some. in the country I is happy. Need, I, I think he's... he's uh, maybe I don't think you've looked at the documentation and I don't think you've looked at the fact sheets because if you had looked at the fact sheets, you have, you'd have seen that it's according to your, uh, your age, even in some cases, you can transfer for your beneficiaries to continue the payment. I'm agreeing, so, with, I'm so, with you, so actually, we are together. What you're suggesting is already there. No, what so I'm, say, what I'm saying, yourself. make it clear. 
I don't have to come to TV to discuss that. Okay, so because you know it, why don't you make it clear? That is not, that is not I am not the one managing the affordable Some. housing. It's your government. No, but you, it is the KK okay. government policy. <laughs> it is the government which is giving this information. Please tell us so that we... You're also a leader in I have, this country. For me, what, I'm, what I've told my people is the government does, has not come out clear and told me what this is about. So I have no comment about it. So are you saying that even when you know that there is a good plan, that can benefit <laughs> your people because it is a government project and you're not in government, no. you're, not, you're going to make sure your people remain in You are deliberately it refusing to... What I am saying, I cannot support a policy people. that doesn't have clarity. I don't know who owns the land. I don't know who's going to buy the houses. I don't know where the houses are going to be. I don't know even if there are one, two, three bedrooms. All right. <laughs> but you can read, right? S speaker. Are you able to read? Speaker. Every speaker. You know, now, you now, now, now you are saying that because you want to hit at me. You know, no, I'm, I'm very well schooled. I'm, I'm highly, highly well schooled. Senator, and that is why we interrogate, no, that's why we interrogate these things that the KK government is doing. We thing... are not disagreeing with the government. All we right. are saying, please make it clear. All right. Okay, what I'm requesting Tell us you, what you are doing you ask, and we'll support you. He's, he, he, please, he's a very senior leader yes. who has served for many, many years. Not many people stay in parliament as long as he has. So which means you, because you cannot be lamenting like the ordinary person who has no access to documentation. Right. You have access to the documentation. You have access to the internet. You have the ability to walk to the Ministry of Housing and request for the documentation and no, educate no, no, your no. people. No. You have, you, no. yes, my you're people, in that position. Se se actually, my people don't want these position. houses in okay. Kisi. They already have houses. Senator and Speaker. <laughs> my people already have houses. Why are you giving them new houses? The memorandum. Oh, then say that. Say That's what I'm again. saying this issue is so complex. Explain it. To us in please, simple can terms. Can progress, please. All Explain right. it to us in we can move to the next Let me because, read yeah. Memorandum of Objects and Reasons, then I can hear Fred. The principal object of this bill is to provide a legal framework for the establishment of the Affordable Housing Fund, access to affordable housing, and in particular, give effect to Article 43 1B of the Constitution on the right to accessible and adequate housing. It further imposes the affordable housing levy to finance the provision of affordable housing. And... Um, associated social and physical <coughs> infrastructure. That's the much it is about that, but of course goes ahead to define the other parts in the bill. So Fred, um, parliamentarians will be back in the house to talk about what you're talking about here. Um, only that at that time it will be uh, restricted to what is in the bill. What would you want to see in this process? Sam, you can already see the, the differences between the senator and young and Honorable Gladys Boschule, as far as the legal framework in implementation of the affordable housing program is concerned. That bill, if you read it, it establishes a framework for the criteria and application process for affordable housing unit. There's an issue that uh, Senator Nyonka raised, particularly on the hustlers, mm -hmm. because we were told that these houses will not only be for the ordinary Kenya, but also for the lowly place, the hustlers. The bill establishes three criteria. One, the social housing unit for persons earning less than 20,000. Then there's affordable housing unit for those 20,000, between 20,000 and 149, I think. And then there's for those uh, that are above 149. Majority of those who lack proper housing or access to <coughs> adequate housing in this country are the ones that fall on the social housing unit. They're the majority. And I would be expecting that parliament give preference and establishes exactly or um, address that concern of those majority. Those numbers again will be, we will want to know what is the population of these people that fall that category so that we address that pronto. Okay. Number two, there's an issue of, you know, worldwide, the concept of affordable housing program must come with social and physical infrastructure. Again, which this bill has, had, uh, uh, has alluded to. But if you look at the location where the land has been identified for the, for the construction of affordable housing, some of those areas already have that. Why don't we address where they don't have, particularly the slum upgrading systems? Hore uh, Boshole mentioned that um, there are people who have been against this. I don't think so. If you want to know that particularly for Lassina Zimio, but Raila Molodinga, our leader, has never been against this, 
<clears throat> he cannot lead a team that draft a manifesto that puts in that manifesto clear provisions of achieving and expanding, expanding affordable housing program. That was there. In fact, in our manifesto, we did say that we are able to expand access to affordable housing by looking at long-term payment mechanisms and short-term payment mechanisms, and also to fast <coughs> incentivizing fast homeowners through working with investors. Mm -hmm. Then also we did say, investor that he was saying, we did say mm -hmm. that we must invest and collaborate with the county government so that the county government, given that they have land, they have identified those lands, they can work with government to achieve affordable housing program. If you look at Kenya Kwanzaa, they have tried. However, we would want to encourage them. Work more with the county government so that the county government can give you the actual numbers. In this county of Homer Bay County where I come from, how many social housing units do we need? How many affordable housing do we need? And what are we going to put as a county towards achievement of the affordable housing? That's why, for me, I'm very objective on this bill. And I would want to see members of parliament debate okay. as far as these issues are concerned. Because if we don't do so, we'll pass a bill that again will be subjected to thorough scrutiny, particularly some when I raised the first one I raised earlier. When the bill wants to cure the irregularity that was found by High Court on the um, discrimination in taxation, because the Constitution says that the burden of taxation shall be shared uh, equitably or fairly. But in the first instance, the affordable housing, the contribution was coming from the employed. Then the employer matches. Mm. This time around, to cure the discrimination that was highlighted by High Court, they have said that even the unemployed shall be mm. levied, the imposition of a levy of 1.5 of their income. I have asked this question again. How will Kenya Kwanzaa government mm. achieve the collection of 1.5 of the income of the unemployed, particularly the informal sector, towards affordable housing? Okay. Do they know them? Okay. Where are they? Even if we have a collector, those are issues that I'm not saying both should answer, but I'm saying Parliament should mm -hmm. easily converse those things okay. so that we have a, 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 a program that, that is successful. And again, I repeat, that, that, we okay. are not against that, that's us okay. as a Yes, uh, uh, Sam, I think it's I important that I just clarify something. Yep. He's mentioned that how will government uh, collect from those who are unemployed? Eh? Mm. We are not, okay, you're confusing things here. There are those people who are formally employed which means they have a payroll and they have an employer who's documented, who then transmits their taxes. Mm. And then there are also individuals who are self-employed. Even the mamamboga on the street is self-employed. Mm -hmm. The lady, person who owns a small kiosk is self-employed. The person who's a boda boda rider is self-employed and they have an income. So how and by you... law, those people also, if they uh, achieve the threshold, they are required to also pay taxes. Remember that each so of these self-employed people... This question is about how will 1.5% be taken from Mamamboga, for instance. Okay, how are yes. taxes taken from the people who are self-employed? Remember, those self-employed people, even the Mamamboga at the market, the uh, uh, money is collected from them, from uh, counties. Counties usually... So are you saying but, that... But, the, but those they, are not taxes. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying there's a, it's, a, it's a form of tax, but yeah. I'm saying there's mechanisms of collecting levies from those people. That's what we're even the informally paid. So that is, you cannot say the whole program, because we don't know how to collect it, because they are not formally employed. These people, they borrow loans, they pay by M-Pesa, the, the, their transactions can be tracked. People are supposed to declare. But that framework is not here. Sorry? That framework is not in the bill. Yes, now, it, it, uh, proper, it proper... Is, yeah, because, okay. Deputy Speaker, just a moment. Um, no, 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 Sam, let me just... Uh, th th I think I know, what you're trying to say is that everything must be in one bill. The reason why we have Sorry, many... Deputy Speaker, we, the you reason why we have... Question. Can I just ask it? Because yes. you're employed by the Parliament of Kenya and your salary is known. 1.5% mm -hmm. to be deducted when you're getting paid and Parliament will match it, 1.5%. Mama Mboga does not have such a structured way. Correct. What I have just described on you is in the bill. Mm. Mama Mboga is not in the bill. 
So how does it achieve <laughs> non-discriminatory contributions? If you look at the bill as drafted, you'll see it talks about those people who are employed and also talks about those people of the income, either your, your, the income that you make mm. from your business. So, how so it, also cover, you know, it also mentions them. It also mentions, it mentions them. but doesn't say. For yes. you, it says that the employer yes. must remit by nine. Yeah. Let me explain to, be, to you about drafting of laws. Yeah. When you draft laws, you don't pack everything in one law. For example, not everything is in our constitution. There's various acts of parliament that actually implement the constitution. And from those acts of parliament, which is a substantive law, there's subsidiary legislation. So even on this one, you will have the, it mentions broad policy statements in, a, in a substantive legislation. Then the details will usually be in subsidiary legislation, which power uh, parliament has donated to mm. various government institutions, which means from time to time, the minister or a state department can publish regulations in so, the so, Kenya so Gazette now, to further... Now the draft of this bill does not know how to collect... 1.5% from, from, from the unemployed. Uh, no, no, not, not unemployed, from the informally employed. You, d you, you draft, you know, you're, you're jumping the gun. I'm not jumping you, anything. No, 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 you, not draft the, <laughs> you not don't the draft gun. the regulations, then draft the substantive legislation. You draft the substantive legislation, mm. pass it through parliament. After that, you then ask yourself, how do you now in detail implement this act of parliament? You then come up with su subsidiary legislation, which are usually called regulations. And that can be done from time to time by the minister. Some powers have been donated for subsidiary legislation making but to various state <coughs> departments. So for you to expect that that be written now, you, you, that is not the proper way of drafting legislation. All right. So uh, hold your guns uh, and wait for the <laughs> actual subsidiary uh, uh, okay. 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 can, can I can I say something? Yes. No, no, no you can't because. You uh, and also, and also, what I would Please. like to ask Okango is, Okango, those good ideas that you have, one. did you appear? before the committee to give your views <laughs> during Shami. public participation? Or do you only wait to come and rubbish it speak, at no, no. the... Speak, at, uh, at, at, so, at sorry, here. Fred, did you appear? I, I, I have not rubbished it. No, but from, did you appear I before? Appear, but from Fred the start I've said... Speak. Let, let, let me just respond to this. Let's and that's why it's good for you to do that. This is a good program. Yes. We have acknowledged And that. I encourage you and to we give your views. That because it's a good program, we wouldn't want it to fail. But we have raised issues. Some of those no, issues raise were raised raise it at public participation. Mm. Now, I want us to listen to... That is the correct forum. Because even if you raise it here on television, Sammy. it's not going to make its way Sammy. to the legislation. But if you go before Se the Senator committee... Fred, I need to listen to something because you're transitioning to the question of IBC, the National...